Hey there, so it is freezing out here. We So even though it is cold right now, it's time to start thinking about seed sowing. And I know when I got started with gardening, I just wanted someone to tell me like, when do I plant things? When should I start seeds? What should I do? Now, no one can really tell you exactly when because your garden is, everyone's garden is different, right? Your garden may be different than my garden. Um, your zone may or may not be different than my zone. But I thought today, I would just tell you when I grow everything, what I've learned. I tried this year to really focus on when to plant things. So I'm gonna head inside <laughs> where it's warm and then we'll talk about when I start all the different things that I grow in my garden as far as seed sowing and planting out starts, etc. Let's get out of the cold. Okay, nice and cozy and warm inside. This is definitely a good day to be chatting about garden things. So yeah, I wanted to talk through what I planned and when. So if you're in zone seven, like me, you can kind of look at this as, if not a specific guide for you, at least an idea of what someone else in your zone is doing. And even if you're not in my zone, um, it might just be kind of an interesting and helpful uh, reference. So I thought I would just put together what I've kind of learned. I really focused this year on making sure I was kind of making a note of when I planted things and what worked best for that because I'm planting all kinds of different things all year long. If you've been around here um, or you follow me on Instagram, you know I'm like kind of always planting. Um, but this year I tried to really sort of settle in on what really works as far as when I do plant things and I've got a bit of um, a bit of a calendar, at least the calendar that I'm following this year of when I think things work best um, for planting. All right, so starting in January, this is when I start thinking about winter sowing. It's a good time in my zone to get any kind of winter sowing plants going. That's when you plant the seeds um, like in a milk jug or something so that they're actually outside and then they wake up kind of naturally. I, I did a video last year about winter sowing. It's definitely something to look into um, more if you're interested, but you can do that in January if you wanna have something um, to plant in January. You can also start, um, if you want to start like some spring crops inside, this might, this would be a good time if you want to do like greens or, um, you know, I don't know, brassicas, things like that. You could start those indoors in January. And then this year, what I'm doing, um, are my typical things, which are herbs because they take quite a bit of time to get going. Um, they're kind of pretty slow growing, most of them. So I start herbs now and I start cool weather flowers. All the things that I can actually put outside before my last frost, I get started indoors now. So I actually just did a video about all the things that I'm starting in January, but violas, pansies, um, and all my herbs and plants like that. I have found that anything that I wanna plant out before the last frost, I can start in January. It works really well. And then the really slow things like, um, I guess oregano, eucalyptus that need, you know, we're 12 to 14 weeks right now out from our last, our last frost. So. I get those started um, right now and let them just grow inside under grow lights and keep going. Baby girl's here with me um, today. Okay, and then February is when I start direct sowing. So I start all of my peas, I direct sow those right around Valentine's Day. It's the middle of February, but saying Valentine's Day is just a little bit easier to remember. So all the peas get direct sown. I have found that anything that says, you know, sow when the soil is first workable in the spring, that is usually for me the middle of February. We don't really, our soil doesn't really freeze solid. You know, the way that it freezes in more Northern climates, our, ours doesn't freeze like that, but we can have kind of colder temperatures in January. The beginning of February can be a little bit cold. The soil can be frozen, at least the top layer. So it's not, you know, workable. Um, and it's definitely too cold for like a little tiny sprouting seedling. So I wait until the middle of February to plant those and then let them germinate and come up. And usually like spinach and even things like that, they do just fine and they'll come up in, you know, the beginning of March um, or the very end of February and, and be just fine. My peas have always grown and done beautifully and I planted them in the middle of February and that's been great. February is also the time when I plant my tomatoes, my peppers, my eggplants, all of those like veggies that you start ahead. I start those 
right in the middle of February. Typically I start them around um, February 14th. I talked about this. I don't want to repeat myself too much. I talked about this in uh, my January seeds video. Um, I'm, I'm waiting a little bit longer this year just because I don't have quite as much space in my house and I don't want to um, to run out of room basically because usually everything gets big and I kind of run out of room. So I'm waiting a little bit till the end of February, but still sometime in February, that's about eight weeks out from my last frost. And so that's when, when I get all those things started. And that's when I start a lot of those um, like annual flowers that I'm gonna start from seed. You know, reading the seed packet, I will look at some flowers you need to start 12 weeks before your uh, before your last frost. And so I have definitely in the past started flowers in, you know, January, end of January, early February. This year I'm trying to just kind of push everything back, delay it a little bit so I don't end up with as big of seedlings in the house at the end of March. Um, but right in that range, you know, there probably will be some flowers that I will also start in February. Um, a lot of those like annual flowers, my petunias, I'm trying to think what else am I starting? So I know I have a lot of flowers I'm starting this year. I can't think of them, petunias, those kind of things. Then um, in March, any of my last flowers, anything that's four weeks before my last frost, I'll plant in March. Um, there's typically like cucamelons. I wanna get those going in March. Um, Thumbergia, that's another black, black eyed Susan vine. I want to get that started in March. Anything that um, I want to just get a little jump start on. Cucumbers, I may start at the end of March so I can plant them out like toward the end of April, giving myself about four weeks for those to grow. Anything like that, I'll get started in March and kind of just wrap up my last like start indoors things. And then April is just planting out. So when I plant out my tomatoes, my peppers at the end of April, eggplants. I start planting annual flowers. I do like to continue to plant annual flowers up through May. And I find that um, sometimes if you wait a little bit longer, which is kind of what I'm trying to do this year, is just kind of push everything toward the, the later end. So mid-May, you know, planting out when you buy the big, the big annual petunias or, um, you know, all those gonfrinas and things like that. End of May, early June, I still am buying annuals and planting containers and hanging baskets and into the garden beds. Um, and that's when all those flowers are really super available in my area. Um, it's well after my last frost, but it's once the temperatures have really warmed up because there are certain plants that just need that really nice heat. And um, if you wait, you know, toward like more mid-May, if you can be patient enough, which is so hard for me, I'm just not patient at all. I wanna plant everything out as soon as it's my last frost. Um, but I, if I wait a little bit more and do more planting in mid-May, I think the plants actually end up being a bit happier. And then you don't get much of a break um, as far as seed starting if you wanna do anything for the fall garden. So I have found that if I wanna do like a decorative pepper um, or you know my own, like tomatoes for the fall garden, anything that I want to have growing and big in the fall, I need to get that started and seeded in June. So July is too late. I tried to start like ornamental peppers for fall in July this past season, it was too late. June is when you need to get it early June, get those things going. Um, I have found in my zone for my garden. July is typically when I always start my um, fall crops inside. So mid July, right in the middle of July, I'll start um, if I'm doing like broccoli, cauliflower, collard greens, mustard greens, kales, anything like that. I typically wait on lettuce, but all those other ones I like to get started as seedlings. I find they just, do so much better. You need to get them started in July so that they have time to grow. Um, if I start them later and direct sow them, I find that they just don't mature in time. They don't get big enough um, to actually be able to harvest it all in the fall. This year, for reference, I started my collard greens right in the middle of July, planted them out in the middle of August-ish, and I have been harvesting them for the last few months. Um, at Thanksgiving, I made a bunch of collard green things um, for my, my guests when they were here and it was super fun. So that worked really beautifully. Um, and that is my mid-June, I mean, sorry, mid-July, start all my fall crops that I wanna have big. As far as direct sowing fall crops, I've really experimented with this um, because 
I've started things in, in August. It's too early. It's too hot. I, lettuce that I start in August never does well, even though I keep trying it, it doesn't work. And if I start things too late, like the plants that I started, you know, say in October, they just don't have time to mature. They don't really get big enough and, and grow. So September I have found is my perfect time. It's my sweet spot where it's cool enough. I can start lettuce. I can start spinach. I can start all of those um, cool weather fall crops and they it's both cool enough for them to grow and be happy and they also have enough time that they can actually get big enough um, to grow so that's kind of my progression for the fall garden it's either july or september and i've kind of ruled out all the other months maybe i'll buy you know some plant starts at the garden center in october but i'm gonna try to hold myself this year to not really direct seeding anything that late because it just doesn't have time to grow and i just end up kind of wasting the seeds uh you do need to protect those fall crops from pests because there's a lot of like caterpillars um and different pests like that that will go after your greens and your brassicas that time of year but that's that's really when you've got to plant them um, the only other things that I really planned on a schedule like this is July is when I start green beans. I figured out this year that July, if I start direct so green beans in July, I can get a beautiful harvest like in the end of September and it works perfectly. So I'm going to experiment with more things like that, but, um, that is the time to plant green beans. For me, they do beautifully, they grow super quickly, um, and they are less bothered by pests than when I start them in the early spring. So they're kind of what I fill in, you know, right around mid to end of July, like some of my squashes and things, those start to die off. I have some holes in the garden, and that's when I will go ahead and plant in green beans. Um, and those are about the biggest like garden rules of when, when I start seeds that I can think of. Um, I'm learning every year and I'm trying to really hone this in so I have a good kind of schedule um, for myself and I just know what really works best. Um, but after a few seasons now, this is this is what has worked for me and, and kind of the guidelines that I'll be following this year. So I just wanted to, to share those a little bit. Let me know if you have any questions about specific plants. I can kind of try to tell you when I grow them. Um, I do have a few little seedlings. I started some like rutabagas and a few other seedlings in the end, gosh, it was like in October and those I have planted out and I'm currently experimenting on whether they will winter over. And I guess the last thing that I didn't mention was garlic and like onion sets. And I don't have a lot of great success with them. I'm working on it, but this year I planted mine, I believe it was in November. Uh, and so far they've come up, maybe it was early December, end of November, early December. Um, and they, they're coming up, they're doing great so far. So stay tuned, I'll, I'll let you know how those go. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my, that's my schedule, um, that's my plan. But definitely let me know if there's any specific things you're wondering about, um, or if you have any like go-to tried and true date, you start things then in my zone um, or anywhere and it, and it works for you, I would, I would love to know. So I hope you're staying warm um, and enjoying a little bit of rest maybe from the garden too. Um, this is a good time of year to hunker down inside since there's not much going on outside. And I'll talk to you in the next video. We're talking all about seeds right now and I am just loving it because seeds are kind of one of my absolute favorite things. Um, I'll talk to you later, bye-bye.